Minister, with close to $1 billion of government funding for SMT committed over the next five years, how will the government assure Singaporeans that SMT's content will not be tainted by allegations of political interference? I'm actually not so surprised that Mr Singh put this question up. And if I may, Mr Singh's question, again asking about influence on editors, journalists, is too predictable, if I may put it this way. His question seems to suggest that he does not trust the journalists and our mainstream media to be objective in reporting, to apply their minds and to be discerning, or to have a sense of responsibility to truthful reporting for the public. I hope I'm wrong in thinking that this is what Mr. Singh is suggesting, but that's what came to mind when he spoke those words. Now, regardless of what I say or what Mr. Singh may suggest, the true test is whether the public trusts the media and how they exercise their choice on a day-to-day -day basis in consuming news media when so many alternatives are available to them at zero cost. And fortunately for us, for all of us, our local mainstream media are trusted by people. And we have every reason to keep it so. I may just quickly follow up uh, with the question uh, from Minister Teo. She mentioned that she felt that uh, there was trust in uh, our local media. I'm wondering, A, if she would also argue that our logo, local media marketplace is generally competitive and hence uh, part B of my question would be if that is so, uh, whether consumers are actually exercising their choice, but perhaps because they don't entirely trust the local uh, media with uh, not purchasing uh, the various uh, publications of our local media outlets, which has therefore necessitated uh, this usage of public funds uh, to fund SP Trust? It's not me that feels that our local mainstream media can be trusted. This is the readers voting with their hands when they swipe their mobile phones on the screen and, you know, giving that confidence, that, that demonstration of confidence in our local mainstream media through the reach and engagement data that is publicly available. I think what he's trying to say is that if they trust these local mainstream media so much, why aren't they buying, paying for subscription? You know, uh, and if they were doing so, then the local mainstream media wouldn't have to turn to the government for funding support. I thought that in my um, earlier responses to uh, members' questions, I made quite clear that this situation for print media companies is not unique to SMT. Uh, it is worldwide, whether it is in the US with the U New York Times or in the UK with The Guardian, it's very hard to translate eyeballs into dollars. And without advertising revenue, these media out outlets, these media companies will be loss making. The steep decline of print media and correspondingly, the migration to the digital space has brought SMT to an inflection point. It will tap on government funding to make essential investments that move it decisively into the digital age. MCI has therefore set aside funding support of up to $180 million annually over the next five years. This will provide SMT with more capital to invest in the future 
while ensuring they are able to sustain their current operations during this critical transition period. With such significant amount of public funding, MCI will monitor SMT's performance closely through key performance indicators, or KPIs, that track total reach and engagement of SMT's products with a focus on their digital platforms. Specific reach indicators for vernacular groups and use and resilience of SMT's flagship products to minimise downtime and disruption. SMT is required to provide progress updates to MCI on a half-yearly basis. This allows MCI to track their progress and for the government to help achieve its desired outcomes when necessary. We will also review the funding quantum after the first five years based on the progress that SMT has made. SMT has exercised editorial independence since its establishment in 1984 as Singapore Press Holdings. Funding support does not change that, as is the case with Mediacorp since 2011. In fact, the 2021 edition of the Reuters Institute Digital News Report indicated that 79% of respondents expressed trust in Channel News Asia. Is such a high level of trust attainable without objective and balanced reporting? The same report indicated that The Straits Times, one of SMT's flagship products, enjoyed a similarly high level of trust among 77% of respondents. It is precisely because people are reading, viewing and hearing our mainstream media that they deserve to be supported. It is because the public see them as trusted sources of news that we must do all we can to keep them as viable propositions.